our guests, our visitors. We thank you for coming on. This is the third week. This is day 11. Oh my goodness, day 11. You know, I pray that everything that we hear and, and we learn, remember everything here is Bible-based. It's nothing that it's our opinion, our interpretation. It's all Bible-based. And if we recall, you know, last week we did Christ's glorious return. Wow, can't wait for that. The devil chained in the bottomless pit. Can't wait for that either. Revelations, amazing space, city, all these promises. Oh, just love it. The four horsemen of Revelation. And on last Thursday, before we took the break, we did the seal of God. Today, it's going to be more informative. And we are going to be speaking about Sunday observance and the book of Revelation. Just to remind you, it is all Bible-based. So as you make notes, as you take your notes, please do not be shy. Ask your questions. And if, you, if time is running out, you can ask questions at the end of the program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I join with the others in welcoming you to the session tonight. And I am excited, glad that you have come. Your presence means so much to us. And I would hasten to say that your presence tonight is a testimony of God's goodness. You're not here by chance. You are by design and you have chosen to come. So may God bless you as you come seeking a blessing at his hand. Now, the next one we want to look on is the quiz that we did on Thursday night. And so um, at this point, I'll give you the answer for the quiz that we did on Thursday night. The first one says that the message of Revelation are for, this was A, B, and C for the answer. So if you either you choose any one or any two. Uh, the message, it was uh, the message of Revelation are for A, every nation, means everybody, or B, all of our relatives, or C, a selected few. The answer for that is A and B. A and B. It is for all our relatives, and it's, the message is for, uh, a rep is for every one. All right, number two. God is not allowing the final winds of war to blow until, this is also an A, B, and C uh, question. First one, A says, until everybody loves everybody. Or B, the servants of God are sealed. Or C, all have accepted Christ. The answer for that is B, right? The servant of God sealed. Number three, at creation, God did these special things to the seventh day. At creation, God did these special things to the seventh day. A, he declared it a holiday. B, he blessed it and C, he sanctified it. The answer for that is B and C. B says he blessed it, and C said he sanctified it. Number four, which group were Sabbath keepers? A, Jesus and his disciples. B, Caesar and the Roman soldiers. Or C, Paul, and Christian Gentiles? The answer for that is A and C. A, which means Jesus and his disciples, and C, the Paul and the Christian Gentiles. Number five, what is the biblical recommended, what is the biblical recommended motives for obedience 
to God's great moral law. The moral law is the Ten Commandments. Now, A, is it love? B, is it grace? Or C, is it peace? And the answer that we're looking for is A, that is love. Now, tonight we'll be doing the, the lesson. And I, I know that since Juba told you how, how to download those lessons, when you download the lessons, you're able to follow uh, 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 me on the screen. Uh, she did put on from uh, 11 until 20, until 24. And also number one and number two, that was not ready at the time when we put them on. They're all there. And we want you to follow, download them that you can follow as we make the presentation. So we will have, we will have Bible passages. We're going to have notes. And we also have um, uh, an exhibit that we'll be present, presenting tonight to make sure we have a full understanding of what we're doing. At this point in time, I'll ask uh, Sister Dorman to give us a caption of the lesson that we are going into tonight. Sunday, observance, and the book of Revelation. Since Revelation is a book for the, for the last days, and since it centers on Jesus and his resurrection, one would expect to find some exciting comments in the book in regard to the church custom of keeping Sunday as a holy day in honor of his resurrection. But strangely, the day is not even mentioned. Stranger, stranger yet, though the day is mentioned eight times in other books of the New Testament, in no case is a command given to keep it holy. Since millions of sincere and loving Bible-believing Christians worship on Sunday, why is the Bible curiously silent on this subject? Could it be that much more is involved here than appears on the surface? The answer is yes. One of the greatest prophecies of the book of Revelation involves the subject of Sunday worship. One of our seminar lessons will consider this crucial topic in detail. It would, however, be impossible to understand this important prophecy unless the topic for today becomes crystal clear. So let us examine the eight scripture references in the New Testament, which mention the first day of the week. Obviously, if there is a command to keep Sunday holy, we should find it in one of these Bible passages. Amen. So tonight we are going to look on the eight Sunday text and see which of them make a change or said that Sunday is a holy day. Number one, we want you to consider uh, three of these New Testament texts that speaks of the resurrection of Jesus. Number one is Mark 16 and verse 9, then Matthew 28, verse 20 and verse 1. John chapter 20 and verse 1. We'll ask Sister Williams to tell us uh, what the Bible says about these texts. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. All right. So the, the answer for that is no. No point blank, no. He said, in the Bible, Sunday is always called the first day of the week. Uh, number two, the, the, the fourth passage is Mark 16, verses 1 and 2. Does this reference imply that the day is holy? Sister Williams would let us know what the Bible says. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. 
And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came onto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Thank you, Sister Doman. Could you give us the note, please? This New Testament passage does tell us something interesting. However, it tells us that Sunday is not the Sabbath. It says that Sabbath is already passed when Sunday comes. Thank you. Now, as we are going through this delivery, and we are reading the notes, we are giving you the Bible passages. We want you to decide for yourself because you'll be able to see what these texts tell us. At the end, you need to let find out and to be assured whether or not that these any of these texts said that Sunday is a holy day. All right. Our next the out to that is no. The next question I want to ask you is. How much did Luke include about Jesus's activities? Activities. How much did Luke include about Jesus's activities? And that is Acts chapter one, verses one through three. Sister Williams again will bring us up to date on what the Bible says. The Bible says, "The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach." until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Thank you very much. Now, Sister Doman, let us see what the note says, please. This is a highly significant scripture passage. Luke is here saying that in this gospel, he included information regarding all that Jesus did and taught, including any commandments given to the disciples. Acts 1 and verse 2. But the book of Luke only mentions the first day of the week, one time with no hint to keep it holy. Amen. All right. Now, the sixth New Testament passage, which mentions the first day of the week, is John chapter 20, and verse 19. Some says that the disciples had gathered in this meeting to inaugurate the keeping of the first day of the week uh, as holy. According to this passage, why had they gathered for this meeting? Let us hear what the Bible says, Sister Williams. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. All right, Sister Doman, give me the note on the five, please. The disciples could not have gathered to inaugurate a new holy day in honor of the resurrection because until Jesus appeared in their midst, they refused to believe he was raised. Mark 16, verse 14. Thank you. So from what, from what we are studying up to this point, there is no reason uh, uh, given uh, in, in, that the, the day is holy. No uh, part in the Bible up to this point has mentioned that the day is holy. The seventh reference mentioning the first day of the week in the new testament is first corinthians 6 verses 1 and 2. several other answers came uh, let us see what the bible says about that now concerning the collection for the saints as i have given order to the churches of galatia even so do ye Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. All right. Uh, it said, lay by him in store, that there be no gathering when I come. Up to this point, the book, the Bible has said nothing about the Sunday being a holy day. And we want to make sure that we do as the Bible says. 
because the Bible is our guide. So from what we understand here, Paul was saying, put away privately at home for the next time we'll meet. And that was the purpose of that giving. My friends, don't be a fool. God is not mocking anyone or misguiding anyone. He want to make sure that we have the understanding of what is being presented. And so that's why we have a Bible and we as Bible believing people will go along with the word of God. Could you give me the note, um, uh, Sister Doma, on, on the six, please? The expression by him means to do it privately in your home. Many Bible translate, translations so record it. For example, one modern translation says, each of you should at home lay aside some money he makes and save it. Paul was gathering funds for the Jerusalem Christians who were suffering from famine. Acts 11, 27 through 30. Romans 15 and verse 26. So he wrote ahead to the churches he would visit, asking that each believer be putting money aside at home weekly so it would be ready when he arrived. These Christians kept Sabbath holy and unusually balanced their accounts on Sunday, so it was an idea time, ideal time to plan their giving. All right. God's law is like his character because it never changes. God's law is like his character. It never changes. Let us, let us follow. Sister Williams, uh, when we look on question number seven, uh, uh, could you do that for me again, please? Uh, question number seven, and on the, the, the Acts 27 through 12. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there they were, many lights in the upper chamber, where they had gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third law and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, trouble not yourself for his life is in him. And when he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. Mm, mm. Now up to this point, there's no place that shows us that Sunday is holy, that the Bible makes Sunday a holy day. Sister Dorman, could you do the note, please? Paul was on a farewell trip to the churches, Acts chapters 20 and 21. Mention at least five other churches that Paul visited on this same farewell trip. When he told the people he would not see them again, they wept much. Acts 20, verse 37 and 38. Acts 21, verse 13 and 14. The meeting at, at Troas was a special farewell meeting. That is why it lasted so long. Two other points should be made. Point A, the fact that they broke bread or celebrated communion at this service does not indicate the day was holy because the Bible says they broke bread every day. Acts 2 and verse 46. Point B, in the Bible, a 24 hour, a 24 day, sorry, is mentioned from even to even, which means from sundown to sundown. Leviticus 23 and verse 32. Mark 1 verse 32. Also, the dark part of the day or evening comes first in the Bible, and then comes the light part. Genesis 1 and verse 5. This meeting was called for the dark part of Sunday. The lights were on. Acts 20, 20 and verse 8, which is what we now call Saturday night. Some Bible translations put it that way, 
For example, the New English Bible says, on Saturday night, by Bible reckoning, when the sun goes down on Saturday night, the dark part of Sunday begins. So this special farewell meeting was called for what we would now designate Saturday night. Thus, it could not possibly be an indication of Sunday sacredness because Sunday keepers do not begin their holy day until midnight. Thank you. Even at this point, now we do not want anybody to misunderstand what we are saying. Uh, we are not saying that you should not worship every day, but we are looking on what is called the day that God sanctify, bless, mm -hmm and set aside and call his holy day, all right? But we should worship every day. And if possible, we can go to church every day, but there's a day that God put aside, which is known as his day. We have already studied that. It is the Lord's day. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So we do not want to have any misunderstanding that we're saying you should not worship on Sunday. All we're saying is that Sunday is not the holy day as prescribed that God said is my holy day. Now let us look on what is termed the Lord's day. What is termed, do you believe that if Jesus or the disciples had made Sunday a holy day, Paul would have told us? That's the question. And the, the question uh, that is being asked here, and therefore we'll try to answer the question from the Bible, and that is Acts chapter 20 and verse 27. Sister Williams, give us the answer from the Bible, please. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. My friends, here we stand. Sister Doman, tell us what the note says. The book of Acts, in covering a period of 23 years beginning with Jesus' ascension, mentions the Sabbath in eight different chapters, but never with any inch of a change. Any change. So the answer to that, he gave us all of God's counsel. Paul gives all counsel. Why would he withhold, withhold such an important part? There is no change. No change. Uh, could the disciples have changed the Sabbath command even if they had wished to do so? That's a question we want to ask. And remember, we said we are Bible-believing people. And therefore, what the Bible says, because our church is established on the Bible as the Word of God. So if there's a change, let us see, according to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 18, also Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2. And if you notice, we are doing Old Testament as well as New Testament because we believe in the whole Bible. The whole Bible is about Jesus himself. Sister Williams, tell us what the Bible says, please. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men to do so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Ye shall not add one unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you. So the answer is outright no, right? God did not make any change, right? The note on the, that, as we will give us all the information we need as we go through, and that is why we are doing Bible texts along with notes, and we'll also do exhibits as we come to this very important subject that we're studying tonight. We want to make sure that you understand what is the holy day? What day is the holy day? Why do we call it holy day? Not because we just come up with a name, but God calls it his holy day. Often, Satan's strategy is to cause me to ignore or break just one of God's commandment. Uh, do you know why? Because remember, Sister Williams just told us, if we break one, then we're guilty of all. And so therefore, we need to be careful. We do not want to break any of God's commandment. We do the right thing. 
we be led by the Bible and it will direct us what to do. Sister Williams, could you tell us what James says in verse chapter two, please? For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. All right. Do not, if we break one, we're guilty. In God's eye, there's no half and half Christian. You must believe God. Or if not, you're not, if you do not believe him, then you disbelieve him. All right. And remember, the devil, uh, Lucifer, who was uh, thrown out of heaven, he says that God is unjust, and therefore God give us every opportunity that we can understand that He is a just God, because He gives everybody opportunity, and He blesses us with knowledge and understanding. And that we can know also know what is right from wrong. In Revelation, in Revelation 1 and verse 10, John says, He was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. According to the Bible, which day is the Lord's day? The Bible will tell us because that is our guide, that is our history book. Uh, according to Exodus 20 and verse 10, also Isaiah 58 and verse 13. And Mark 2 and verse 28. If you notice, we are using Old Testament and New Testament to answer this very important question. Sister Williams, please give us the answer from the Bible. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. If thou turn away the foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call in the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Hmm. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Thank you very much. The Son of Man. You see, my friend, when we talk about uh, doing the things that are godly, it's very important. Now, uh, you notice here that it said that the seventh day is the Sabbath, and this, the seventh day is God's holy day. And that means we should come apart and we should uh, worship God, uh, come away from the everyday activities everyday common activities, and we should worship God because this is his holy day. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10, Isaiah 58 verse 13, Matthew 12 and verse 8, and also Mark 2 and 27. They tell us of them. Can we review them, Sister Williams, that all right? This, I know I'm putting a little bit more on you, right? So we know um, when, when we look at it, so which day is the Lord's day? If we do them, she's going to give me those texts. Which day is the Lord's day? As we uh, study uh, according to the Bible, let, let us find out from uh, any one of these texts and which of them is the Lord's day. Are you ready yet? But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And okay. Matthew 12, yes. 
And verse 8 reads, But the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. So thank you, Sister Williams. I'm sorry to put you all through that. The whole thing okay. simply tell us that the, the Lord's day is a special day. It's not Sunday. It's not Monday. All the days belong to God. But he said, this day is my day. I need you to give me special honor. And I ask you to rest. No common activity should be done on this day. Right? And he, he, he one part to hurt you said, if you should take your foot off my day. That means do not trample it on the foot. It is important. It is God's day. And he said, this is my day. And we should honor his day. Because that is the day that he set aside. And he wants to make sure that we honor that day. My friend, God is a good God. And he will not uh, give us more than what we can do he because he's our creator and he is our redeemer and he is our friend and therefore he will just give to us a measured amount that he he knows that we will be able to and in addition to that what he gives he blesses and so it simply means anything you give us to do we will be able to do it and we need to look to him at all times. God is there for us. My, let us look on what we would call a, mem a memorial of Jesus' re resurrection. Is there a change because of that memorial? Uh, it, it would seem so, right? He said, uh, people sometimes call Sunday the Lord's day, but the Bible said uh, the Sabbath is the Lord's day. Many people said because Jesus was resurrected on Sunday, then this is the Lord's day because they are now worshiping a risen Christ. Nothing is wrong with worshiping, but you cannot change the day. God did not change the day. The Sabbath is still the day of the Lord. That is the Lord's day. Um, so my friend, as we, as we go ahead, uh, follow me, uh, uh, that you can make up your mind uh, what day should you honor the God you worship? Should I do it on Sunday because my grandfather did it or because my grandmother did it, because my entire family did it? I, 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 when I was born, they were doing it. And the, uh, is that we are serving our grandparents or our relative or we are honoring God? So as we go through this very important study, we are leading you along and encouraging you along that you can know what day to honor as the Sabbath day. What does the Bible call Sunday? What does the Bible call Sunday? According to Ezekiel 46 and verse 1. Sister Williams? Thus saith the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looketh towards the east shall be shut the six working days, but on Sabbath it shall be open, and in the day of the new moon it shall be open. So therefore, if we understand that the seventh day is Sunday, then the, the, uh, Sabbath rather, then the day after that is Sunday. All right? And God is pointing to us, right? One of the six working days. Sunday is called one of the six working days, not the day that God sanctified, honor, set aside, right? That is the first day of the week. And um, I'm sorry you, you do not have the, the calendar in front of you, but all of us, most, most of us know how the calendar is laid out. Uh, the, the little note here, Sister uh, Domina, I just do this little note. It said, misguided men, I substituted another day of worship for the Sabbath. We cannot just worship and say I'm going to worship on any day because my worship must be accepted by God. Yes, God will accept your worship any day. But it does not mean that any day that you worship is the Sabbath. 
You can always worship and you need to get up in the morning and have morning worship. And if possible, worship at midday. And if possible, you worship in the evening. Yes, we must worship on every day. But God set aside a day, which he calls the Sabbath day, that is his day. And there should be no uh, secular work done on the Lord's day. My next question, therefore, since the Bible calls Sunday a work day, and nowhere suggests that it is holy, where must the concept of Sunday sacredness have come from? It must come from someplace. Let us look at Matthew, Sister Williams, Matthew chapter 15, verse 30, uh, 15, 3 through 9, please. Could tell us what the Bible says. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But he, ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor it not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus hath he made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. All right. So where did Sunday sacredness come from? It, come, it came in from the commandment of men who made changes and said that they were authorized by God to make the change. While you and I studied a few lessons ago that we cannot add to the Bible, nor take, any way, any, take anything away from it. Because if we add to it, then we, we add to uh, uh, our issues of life, right? We add to the, 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 our, our, our end. Uh, and if we take away from it, we are also take away from the sacredness, from what God has given. So therefore, what we are doing, and what most of us are doing, we are worshiping on Sunday, because of the tradition of men. And later on, we will name those who have made the change and show you what the Bible says about those changes. Now, many people observe Sunday as a holy day in honor of Jesus' resurrection. But what did Jesus institute for us in honor of his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 6, and Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12. Sister Williams, could you tell us what the Bible says? It says, Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised them from the dead. So what Jesus has left as our example uh, for his death, his burial, and his resurrection, the baptism, the baptismal service, right? When we are baptized, we, 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 we become dead to sin. So, Immerse. That means you go under the water. You bury down there uh, the sins. And then you rise out of the water and you arise to walk in the newness of Jesus Christ, the new life that you are now enjoying because of your baptism. 
hasn't the cal calendar been changed so we cannot know which day is the seventh day? Hasn't the calendar been changed so that we cannot know what day is the seventh day? Let us find out. This is October 1582. 1582. If we look on the calendar in front of us, we'll notice that uh, Monday is the first day of October. All right, and we notice that it begins on Monday. Now, Sunday is on the left-hand corner, or to your right, you can see that Sunday is the first day of the week. That has not changed. The cycle remains the same. But let me inform you, my friend, some has already made the changes where they move the first day of the week from Sunday, right, uh, to Monday, and make Monday the first day of the week. Now, we, three slides ago, we look on and the question asked, why do we worship on Sunday? And the Bible said, according to the New Testament, that because of the tradition of men, we keep Sunday as a sacred day, all right? And what they are doing now, what they have already started doing is to change the calendar that the first day of the week, instead of being Sunday, it will be Monday. Remember, don't be fooled. Because the Bible said, the devil will try to slip you up. And I did not mean for God and for the direction that he gave, even the very saint, righteous people, uh, saint, saintly people could have been misled. So it, it is the same today. When we add a day, and they said every leap year, that is the 29th of February, we add just a day, uh, not taking or adding a week, we do not change that week to be six or eight days long. In other words, it remain the same, a week is a week. And, and therefore, a week is a week, seven day is one week. The first day of the month, uh, sorry, the first day of the week being Sunday. Right, because the Bible says God blessed the seventh day, and the Bible said the seventh day and the calendar also help us to understand. But remember, I said, don't be fooled. They are making a change because man, man is trying to change God's law, not just what man wanted to do, but is what the devil is telling man to do. Sister Doman, could you do the note for me, please? The Roman, the, yes, ma'am. The Romans who were ruling in Jesus' day gave us our modern calendar. Only one change has been made in October of 1582. Ten days were removed from the calendar. However, the change did not affect the weekly cycle because the numbering on the calendar went from Thursday, the 4th, to Friday the 15th. We had a day, the 29th of February, each leap year, but this does not affect the weekly cycle either. Not all countries made this necessary calendar adjustment in 1582, but the same kind of change was eventually made everywhere. Therefore, the seventh day on our calendar day is the very same seventh day that Jesus kept. All right, um, so my friend, we are going to look on something nailed to the cross, all right? At this, at this point, we're going to bring to you what we call exhibit, uh, something that will explain uh, the laws and um, uh, as we go along. So at this time, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to listen quite attentively as we go over these laws. on the contrast of moral and ceremonial laws. We're going to look at the moral laws first. The moral law, it says, it's called royal law of liberty. And the, and the text for that is found in James chapter two, verses eight through 12. 
the next one of the moral law says spoken of God. And the text for that one is Deuteronomy 4 and verse 12. Written by God and stone. Continue with the moral law. And the text for that, or we have two texts for this. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. And Exodus 31 verse 18. Place in the ark. Hebrews 9 verse 4 and Exodus chapter 40 and verse 20. To stand forever. Psalm 101 and 11, I'm sorry, verses 7 and 8. Moral law, moral law. All these I'm reading, they are moral law. Give the knowledge of sin. Romans 3 verse 20 and Romans 7 verse 7. Not grievous. 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. Judges all men. James 2 verses 10 through 12. Spiritual. Romans 7 verse 14. So these are the moral law. Now we look on the ritual of ceremonial law called law contained in ordinances. Ephesians 2 and verse 15, spoken by Moses. Leviticus 1 verses 1 through 3, written by Moses in book. 2 Chronicles 35 verse 12, placed in the side of the ark. Deuteronomy 3, 31 verses 24 through 26. Ended at the cross. Colossians 2 verse 14 through to 17. Was given because of sin. Galatians 3 verse 19. Contrary to us. Colossians 2 verses 14 through 17. Judges no man. Colossians 2, verses 14 through 17. Carnal, Hebrews 9, verse 10. All right, if you look at the comparison, be comparison of God and his law. All right, now we go back to God's law, still law. God's law is spiritual, according to John 4 and 24. And the law, his law, is also spiritual, according to Romans 7, 14. God is love. God's law is love. Matthew uh, uh, 22 and verse, uh, Matthew 37, 40. All right. Then we go to God is righteous. God is righteous. All right. We go back to it today. His law is righteous. God is holy. His law is holy. God stands forever. His law stands forever. God is good. Right, his law is good, and they all we have Luke 18, verse 19, we have Romans 7 and verse 12. I'm sorry, we have, then we go to say God is just and his law is just, according to Romans 7 12. Also, God is pure, according to first John, and also his law is pure, according to the Psalms. God is unchangeable, and his law is also unchangeable. Then we think about laws that are nailed to the cross. What is the difference? We have laws which were rituals that were pointing uh, to Jesus that was to come. When Jesus came, those laws were no longer necessary because they were all finished. And we use the term, they are now nailed to the cross. We no longer go by the ceremonial laws or the laws of the ceremonies because we, but we continue to go according to the moral law, which started all the way back in Eden, and that will be there until the end of the world. We have already studied that when uh, someone sinned in those days, when they have to go by the ceremonial law, they had to make uh, kill a sacrifice, and the priest would in turn take the sacrifice into the inner court. We have studied all that. Now, after Jesus came, those laws were no longer necessary because Jesus 
now come and he is the sacrifice that those laws were pointing to. And that is why we said those laws are now nailed to the cross. So as we move on, the next question we want to ask you is this. In Colossians 2 verse 14 to 17, Paul tells us that uh, certain Sabbaths are no longer binding because they ended at the cross. Which Sabbath uh, were these? Which ones were no longer binding? Which one were nailed to the cross, right? That is what we want Sister Williams to tell us. If you read that passage of scripture, please hear what the Bible says. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in him. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink, or in respect of a holy day, holy day or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. All right, Sister Dorman. God gave his people different kinds of instruction through Moses. He gave them the moral law of the Ten Commandments, which defines man's duty to his God and his duty to his fellow beings. Such a law is a permanent by its very nature. He gave them ritual or cer cer ceremonial laws, which regulated the sacrificial system that symbolized and foreshadowed the coming sacri sacrificial death and priestly ministry of Christ. Hebrews 10 and verse 1. By this means, he taught Israel the gospel. Hebrews 4, 1 through 2, or the plan of salvation. Through the sacrifices and the med mediation of the Hebrew priesthood, they saw foreshadowed the coming Redeemer. By their nature, it is evident that the ceremonial or ritual laws are temporary until the coming of the, Je of the Jesus, which they foreshadowed. The annual or yearly Sabbaths were a part of this ritual system, each foreshadowing some aspect of Christ and the plan of salvation. For example, the ritual Sabbath of the Passover foreshadowed Christ's death, 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. All these yearly Sabbaths came to an end at the cross. Thank you. Those were the laws of sermon. They were very important, but they had their time in history. Now we're going to give you a little more information on this as we move along in the cell, but before we do that, let us, see, um, let us see what our next question asks and how important is that, all right? We, 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 we have already looked at some of the exhibits and we'll move on at this time to exhibit number three. Church's comment, Baptist. There was and is a commandment to keep holy the Sabbath day, but that Sabbath day was not Sunday. It will be sad, however, and with some show of triumph, that the Sabbath was transferred from the seventh to the first day of the week. Where can the record of such transaction be found? Not in the New Testament, absolutely not. There is no scriptural evidence of the change of the Sabbath institution from the seventh to the first day of the week. All right, now this is taken from the manual, the Baptist manual. As we look at this, what we're presenting to you at this time is what other churches said about this day. All right, whether or not they accept it and what they do, why they do what they do. That is what the Baptist church said. Now we want to hear what the Catholic church says. The Catholic church. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scripture enforced the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we, the Catholics, 
never sanctified. Now, and that is done by James Cardinal Gibbons. All right, he's saying that they, as a Catholic church, never sanctify Sabbath. God has already said the day is sanctified. It is set aside. It is holy. So we are saying we are studying what? The tradition of man. So that is give us an, an idea who made the change. Let us see what the Christian church says. There never was any change of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. There is not in any place in the Bible any intimation intimation of such a change first day observant All right that is another ch church now the church of christ what does the church of christ say i do not believe that the lord's day came in the room of the jewish sabbath or that the sabbath was changed from the seventh to the first day that's alexander campbell or the congregationalist what do they say about the day the current notion that Christ and his apostles authoritatively substituted the first day for the seventh is absolutely without any authority in the New Testament. All right, that, that is Dr. Lehman Abbott for the Christian Union, and he did that in January 19 in 1882. Let us see what the Episcopal Church says. Is there any command in the New Testament to change the day of the weekly rest from Saturday to Sunday? None. A manual of the Christian doctrine. Now listen to the Methodist. Take the matter of Sunday. There is no passage telling Christians to keep that day or to transfer the Jewish Sabbath to that day. All right. Now, my friend, Presbyterian. What do they say? The Christian Sabbath, which is Sunday, is not in the scripture and was not by the primitive church called the Sabbath. And that is Dwight uh, yes. Theology, volume four, page 401. Lutheran, observance of the Lord's Day, Sunday, is founded not on any command of God, but on the authority of the church. Dictionary. The, but the dictionary says, the notion of a formal institution of apostolic authority of the Lord's day, meaning Sunday, for the Jewish Sabbath, or the first from the seventh day, and the transference of it, perhaps in a spiritualized form of that sabbatical obligation established by the pre promulgation of the fourth commandment has no basis what, whatever either in Holy Scripture or in Christian antiquity. Encyclopedia. It must be confessed that there is no law in the New Testament concerning the first day. No, though some individual pastors may argue the point, we have not found one single Sunday keeping organization yet, which did not in its full official literature plainly admit that there is no scripture to support Sunday observance. My friend, are we we're getting through? We're getting the information to you. It is very important that you have the information because if you do not have it, then you will if you do not have light, you'll stumble in the dark. And we want to make sure that you have the light. What do the churches which worship on Sunday say about this problem? Right? What do they say um, about the problem that we face? about this day and that is a problem that we have gone through and we know for sure that god will direct and lead us as we go along my love and my obedience my love and my obedience only baptism by immersion represent death burial and resurrection therefore what is my love and uh, obedience uh, am i 
uh, in love with, with the God I serve because he said, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. Why do you suppose uh, the book of Revelation stresses three times that God's people will keep his commandments? Revelation 12, 17. Revelation 14, verse 12. Revelation 22 and verse 14. Why do you think the Bible expressed that? And why it is so important? Sister Williams, could you tell us what the Bible says? It says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnants of her seed, which keep the commandment of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. And blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. All right, so here we are seeing, right, that is why the devil is angry with God's people. He does not want us to keep uh, uh, God's commandment. And therefore he tries his endeavor best to get in our way. And if we are not careful, he will get in our way because we of ourselves, by ourselves, are no match for him. The devil is powerful, had power in heaven, came out being driven out of heaven, powerful, hasn't changed. So therefore, you and I have no, are no match for him. And this being is trying to confuse us. And my friends, let me say this to you. Whenever we commit an act of sinfulness, the devil would like to catch you in that act of sinfulness and take your life because he wants to, as, much, as many that he can uh, uh, take out while they are breaking God's commandment, they is making up his kingdom. But we want to be we want, be, we want to be a member of the citizens of God's kingdom. And therefore, let us try to deny the devil the opportunity by leaning upon Jesus. The Bible says, he said, lean on me. And if you lean on him, he's strong enough. And if we don't, then we will stumble. My friend, God is able and he's willing. He's waiting for us, right? He said he become the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. He is the author. He is the finisher. He will stand for us. Let us see what uh, Sister Williams has to say about Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9. And being made perfect... He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Amen. Sister uh, Doman, give the note, please. Jesus in Revelation is stressing that salvation is provided for the obedient and not for the disobedient. Hmm. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 makes it very clear that many active church members will be shocked when they are shut out of heaven for yes. disobedience in spite of the fact that they did many wonderful things in the Lord's name. Mm. So it's not yes. just your works, it's your faith, all right? Uh, you, you must serve him with all your heart. Otherwise, you could hear uh, just like what was said to the five virgins. Remember, it was 10 virgins, and they all had oil in their lamp. That means they all had the Holy Spirit. But as time went on, the oil ran out. Five of them, oil went dry. And they had to go to get refilled. And when they came back, the bridegroom came. And he was in. And the door were closed. Just like Sister Dorma just reminded us, when they knock and try to gain entrance, they were told, uh, it is too late to depart. I know you're not. My friend, we must be serious about our soul's salvation. What two crucial things 
is Jesus saying to all of us today in regard to his this problem? In Matthew chapter 15, verse 3, and John 14 and verse 15. Sister Williams, please. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? If ye love me, keep my commandments. Mm. If you love me. Because he also went further, John said, If you said you love God and keep not his commandment, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. You are a liar and the truth is not in you. Uh, Sister Doman, could you explain to us the note, please? We serve whomever we obey. Romans 6, verse 16. Will we serve Jesus and worship on his holy day? Or will we serve and thus worship misguided men who were led by Satan to replace God's holy day with a substitute? Jesus said very plainly that if we love him, we will gladly keep his commandments. This includes Sabbath keeping, which is the fourth commandment. Amen. Are you willing to follow where Jesus leads? My friend, Jesus leads. Though the road may sometimes be difficult, it leads to the tree of life in the city of God. That is where we want to be. My friend, Jesus has died for us. All we need to do is live for him. Let us look. On, uh, we, we, we will we were actually done these as supplemental things. So once again, the only text in the New Testament that mentioned the first day of the week as Sunday are one, Matthew 28, one, right? In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher, Matthew 28, verse one. Mark 16, verses 1 and 2. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome, and brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, which is the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Right? Mark chapter 16 and verse 9. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils, according to Mark 16 and verse 9. Luke 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. John chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week come at Mary Magdalene, Early in the morning, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see the stone taken away from the sepulchre. John 20 and verse 1, John 20, 19, says, Then in the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Acts 7. Acts 20, verse 7, and upon the first day of the week, if you notice, the Bible is always speaking about the first day of the week because the seventh day is special, which is the Sabbath. All of these texts show you the first day of the week. Then it said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as the sound of a trumpet. Right? The Lord's day is the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man, the Son of Man, is also Lord of the Sabbath. He created that day and he said it is his day. It is his day, day for God and not for men. So all we are doing here is going over the text that we, we have showed you. We reiterate that none of these texts says that God bless Sunday and make it a holy day. It is a worship day not a holy day. The holy day is a Sabbath, the oh, seventh day. The Sunday is a work day, first day of the week. My friend, the question therefore, we want, I want to ask you to choose one or more of these answers from the presentation tonight. The quiz. Number one, according to the Bible, 
the Lord's day is A, the seventh day, or B, the fourth day. Very clear. The seventh day or the fourth day. C, or is it the first day? We we'll move to the next one. Choose one or more of these answers. What did Jesus institute in the honor of his resurrection? A, Sabbath, sacredness. First day, sacredness. Or the rite of baptism. Which one? Choose one. Next one, what law was nailed to the cross? A, the health law, B, the ceremonial law, or C, the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. Number four, where did the concept of Sunday sacredness come from? Did it come by tradition? Did it come from the Bible? Or none of the above? Choose one. Number five. Why should this issue be considered important to me? It is a biblical issue. That's A, because I love him. That's B and C, I want to do what is right. While you are taking that down, I just want to say to you, I, I'm excited and we are happy that we are able to make this presentation tonight because I, we hope that we have opened some light to someone who might have been in darkness as far as Sunday sacredness is concerned. So I ask you uh, to make the choice, and that is to accept into your life the God who have given you the, the willingness, number one, and the opportunity to serve him. Does what we have studied tonight make sense to you? Is it clear? If that is clear, my friend, that is to help you to make a decision to serve the Lord. If you have been impressed with some new ideas and you are ready to give them an honest consideration, then Christ is your answer. Christ is your answer. If you believe that what has been presented tonight is truth, and you want to go on record by saying, I am reading, hearing, and want to do the things of which this prophecy and receive the blessings of the God that God has promised, then accept Jesus Christ in your life. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Loving Heavenly Father, uh, we give you thanks and we praise you because you're worthy. We thank you that tonight you have brought us together that you could, we could make the presentation so as your people could hear and understand that Sunday sacredness is not biblical. Sunday worship is good because we all should worship. But the day that you have honored and set aside is the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. So I pray, Lord, that your people will make that decision who have not yet done so to accept you as the God of their lives by choosing to obey and to the command which says, remember the Sabbath day to keep the holy. Keep us faithful, Lord. Continue to bless us and help us to always trust you. And when it shall come, save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My friends, I thank you uh, for coming out.
And our next lesson will be lesson number 12, two worldwide movements unveiled. Two worldwide movements unveiled. If you were to miss any, then tomorrow night is not the one that you should miss. Come out and study with us.